Back when Ajit Pai was trying to convince us that a repeal of net neutrality was in our best interest, do you remember the main argument that he was using to justify his repeal of net neutrality? He claimed, and he repeated this over and over again, that net neutrality, Title II net neutrality, hurt broadband investment. Now, we all pushed back against that because behind closed doors, you know, these internet service providers were assuring their shareholders that this wasn't going to hurt their bottom line and also investment increased. So here's why <laughs> I had to talk about this story. Ajit Pai's main reason for repealing net neutrality just blew up in his face in an unbelievable way because since he decided to repeal net neutrality, guess what happened? Investment actually decreased. <laughs> Congratulations, you played yourself. So as Carl Bode of Tech Dirt reports, you'll recall that one of the top reasons for killing popular net neutrality rules was that it had somehow killed broadband industry investment. Of course, a wide array of publicly available data easily disproves this claim, but that didn't stop FCC boss Ajit Pai and ISPs from repeating it and in some cases lying before Congress about it anyway. We were told more times than we could count that with net neutrality dead, sector investment would spike. You'll be shocked to learn this purported boon in investment isn't happening. A few weeks ago, Verizon made it clear its capex would be declining and the company's deployment would see no impact despite billions in tax cuts and regulatory favors by the Trump FCC. Trump's tax reform alone netted Verizon an estimated $3.5 billion to $4 billion. A recent FCC policy order purporting to speed up 5G wireless deployment in part by eliminating local authority over negotiations with carriers netted Verizon another $2 billion and that's before you even get to the potential revenue boost thanks to the repeal of net neutrality and elimination of broadband privacy rules. Ironically, Verizon's dip in CAPEX came right on the heels of the wireless industry and Ajit Pai in perfectly coordinated unison trying to claim that a CAPEX rise in 2017 was directly due to the repeal of net neutrality. They ignored an important point. However, net neutrality wasn't even repealed until June of this year. If this endless roster of favors was to impact network investment, accelerate network deployment, and unleash a magical wave of innovation, that should all be happening right now. And yet, the opposite is happening. And of course, it's not just Verizon, AT&T, and Sprint here are also reducing overall CAPEX. Sprint, Verizon, and AT&T have all reduced their overall CAPEX numbers for 2018. The operators cite a variety of reasons, from timing issues to more efficient network technologies. But the ultimate result is the same. Where there was once excitement, now there's a decided sense of pragmatism. Now, there's a number of different reasons for this, including some cost savings in moving from legacy hardware to more efficient virtualization technologies. But again, a decline is not what was promised ahead of the sales pitch for the tax cuts and the attack on net neutrality. The nation was, time and again, promised unrivaled innovation and investment boosts if the nation's companies received a multi-billion dollar tax cut and net neutrality and other regulatory underbrush was cleared out of the way. That didn't happen. Instead of investing all these tax breaks, perks, and savings back into the network, they were pocketed by investors and executives, which, for anybody with half a functional brainstem, was the entire point of having a former Verizon lawyer running the FCC in the first place. This is a long-standing trend in telecom. Promise the public the world if they get tax cuts, subsidies, and blind deregulation, then avoid doing pretty much all of those things while pocketing the savings. Perhaps some Someday, America will actually learn some kind of lesson from the experience. The main reason why Ajit Pai cited the need to repeal net neutrality was because it was hurting investment, and he repeals net neutrality, and then unfortunately for him, investment declines. Now, is the decline in investment a direct result of the repeal of net neutrality? I don't necessarily think so. I, I just don't think that investment and net neutrality are correlated in any way. There's no cause and effect relationship or certainly no direct cause and effect relationship. So I don't, <laughs> this is really a bad look for Ajit Pai. And I feel as if this is such a big story, perhaps the biggest story since the repeal of net neutrality itself, 
that every single media outlet should be talking about this because this is gigantic news. The logical conclusion if we lived in a democracy would be, okay, we'll, we tried it your way. We tried this experiment where we go without net neutrality and not only did investment decrease, but it's already the case that just months after the net neutrality repeal, there are reports of ISPs throttling certain websites, namely their competitors. So it's unfathomable to me that we can continue with this facade that repealing net neutrality was about more than anything but just giving millions upon millions, actually billions of dollars technically, to these internet service providers. So that's really all that I got to say about this issue. I just, I couldn't not share this story because those of you who have been following along with this story for the past year, you know that this is huge because Ajit Pai, after saying this so many times, now he's having to eat those words. But will he even acknowledge this? Absolutely not. He's not going to acknowledge this. He's going to pretend like everything is PG Keen and that his repeal of net neutrality is working out his plan because in actuality it is. It's doing exactly what he wanted. Now he may not have explained to you why he was personally in favor of repealing net neutrality, but we all know deep down that as a former and possibly future Verizon employee, he was doing this so that way Verizon can get billions and billions of dollars. And Ajit Pai has delivered in a way that perhaps no other FCC chair in recent history has been able to in terms of giving the industry money. I mean, think about how insane that is. He's supposed to be regulating the industry, but his policies are resulting in billions of dollars for Verizon. In terms of consumers and um, protecting us... We get none of that with the Jeet Pai as FCC. So this should be a scandal. And if we lived in an actual democracy and not an oligarchy, there would be impeachment pre proceedings for Ajit Pai immediately. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen. And I think that this story is largely going to be ignored by not just the mainstream media, but people in Congress. But it shouldn't be because this is a huge story. Support this podcast by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash humanist report.